Hello, Colorado Realtors. I'm Scott Peterson. Thank you for joining me for another edition, a very unique edition of Legal Bites. As you can see, I'm not in my uh, uh, or in our normal car studio um, producing this. Uh, don't have my my trusty, dusty assistant Monica in the booth over there uh, controlling things. It's just me in my home office under quarantine. Um, I'm actually not under quarantine, but. Um, we all need to be careful, and, and I'm doing this because of uh, uh, the reason, and I don't mean to make, make light or joke of any of it, because it's a very serious time uh, in, in our, in our uh, country and in our state and, and within the real estate industry. Uh, related to the coronavirus, I wanted to get something out uh, quickly on Legal Bites because I've seen a number of issues that have percolated up, specifically over the last just couple of days through calls to the legal hotline and inquiries from, from uh, realtors around the state. And I just wanted to touch on a few, a couple of those those issues and uh, real estate transactions as they as they dovetail and we all adjust to um, uh, the coronavirus in the state of Colorado. Uh, so a couple things I want to point out. First of all, uh, property access issues. I've had uh, a few questions related to property access. A couple different tangents on that. Uh, one would be a, a seller who is currently listed. You've got a, your realtor. You've got your seller uh, seller's property listed on the market. It's active. Buyers wanting to do showings, and your sellers now saying, "Hey, I don't want people in my house. I don't want people coming through." And and in, in all likelihood, that's not they don't want people coming through over the next day or two or the weekend. But they might have that perspective for the next uh, several days or weeks or potentially even longer. And I think at this point, you need to be having a conversation with your sellers to say, "Hey, listen, if we're not going to be allowing showings uh, for our actively listed property, then let's let's take a breath and, and change the status of the listing to withdrawn." so that it's not populating out there as being available for showings and, um, and, and you know, take it off the market for, for a week or two weeks. Let, let your sellers uh, have their space and, and, and feel safe and, and comfortable in the, in the home that they still candidly own. And so that's for the listed properties. The other a little bit more interesting angle is for the uh, properties that are currently under contract. And, um, uh, and, and that you have a buyer who is needing to perform inspections or perform other due diligence or access the property uh, in connection with the contract that they have. And that creates a little bit different tension for a seller who doesn't want people in their property because the contract requires uh, that they provide reasonable access to a buyer and the buyer obviously needs to perform their due diligence items such as inspection and, and other things. And so a seller who is under contract and saying, oh, I'm not going to let anybody access my house. Uh, potentially creates uh, the opportunity for breach and uh, other concerns there. And so as a listing realtor with your seller under contract, they, they need to understand that the contract to buy and sell does, does require that they provide some reasonable access. And, and, and you know, that's part of the brokerage uh, piece too, and that's making sure that they understand what their obligations are and helping to encourage them to uh, meet the obligations of their contract. Uh, but, but certainly um, makes it a lot more complicated if they have an active contract to sell and a buyer is, is legitimately trying to perform their, uh, their due diligence um, issues. And then, you know, on the, on the buyer side, and this is probably obvious, but I'll say it anyhow. I mean, if, if you or your buyers are, are not feeling well or not in a, you know, the, the real estate transactions can wait. And I know that buyers who have been looking for homes and something new pops onto the market and they're urgent, they want to go see it, they want to go see it now. If they're not feeling well or you're not feeling well or there's anything like that, it's, it's just not fair to go and potentially contaminate somebody's home and to uh, perpetuate the, the spread of this. And, and so uh, I think it's reasonable to, to have that, that conversation with your buyers, at least, you know, if you sense or have some reason to suspect that they may not be uh, of, of good health. And obviously you don't want them in your car driving around with you either. So, so be on, on heightened alert because you, you guys are still the, the buffers, uh, you know, between the your client and the marketplace, and and so I think you you've got some some responsibility to be mindful there. Uh, another area that I'm, I'm I've gotten some questions on is uh, with the financial markets and the and the uncertainty there. Um, you know, people and their the uncertainty potentially in their in their employment and the job market. You know, they've currently got a contract on a property. What what are, I'm not sure if this if, if I'm going to have a job. You know, I'm not sure if I can. You know, afford it. I've lost you know money in the stock market. Whatever their concerns might be, uh, if you're a realtor representing a buyer, then you, you know you need to be uh, letting your buyers know that there's a, a loan conditions deadline 
paragraph 5.2 of the contract to buy and sell might be a place where they could find some, some re recourse again, obviously assuming they're doing that in good faith and have legitimate concerns. Uh, paragraph 5.2 is the loan conditions deadline. And a lot of people believe that it has to do most specifically or, or exclusively with lender approval of a buyer. Well, it doesn't. It has to do with that as well as a buyer's ability to subjectively analyze their financial condition and the loan conditions related to that and their ability to perform the mortgage payments and all of those things. And interest rates may be fantastic right now, but uh, if, if a buyer has legitimate uncertainties in other areas of their financial condition, then uh, paragraph 5.2 might be a good place to instruct them to um, consider, again, in, in connection with uh, making good faith decisions about, uh, about exercising contingencies uh, in general. Um, and uh, the last thing I'll point out before I, I sign off here is the uh, clerk and recorder's office I know in Adams County is, uh, is going to be shut down for some period of time. I don't know exactly how long. Uh, smaller area. If, if, if through shutdowns and office closures uh, over the next several weeks, we start to see uh, multiple counties uh, or larger counties uh, doing that, then uh, you as brokers, realtors in those, in those marketplaces need to, are going to need to be facilitating things probably a little bit better with the title company. I mean, if the title, if the clerk and recorder's office isn't open to accept recordings and filings, obviously the title company can't do that. And, you know, if we're talking about a, a day or two or a couple of, you know, three, four days, maybe that's not an issue. But, but depending on how long a clerk and recorder's office may be closed and how uh, it would be impossible, therefore, for a, a, a title company to actually file a transaction may impact the title company's ability to close the deal. So for a lot of these things, you know, taking a big deep breath and using the amend extend to uh, maybe buy, extend out the inspection time period for a buyer. If you've got a seller who says, I want some, I want some space for the time being, um, or if you've got some financial concerns and a buyer wants to push back closing or their loan conditions deadline, you know, this is where you broker, this is where you earn your money. And, and if you guys are watching this, I know you're capable of understanding the importance of, of, of your role, your title, which is, is a broker. And, and this is a very unique and, and challenging set of times to be a broker in because, you know, I, we don't know how to react to, to, to this. I don't, I think most of us in our lifetimes hasn't, hasn't seen, you know, the, the, the movement of the markets and, and, and the, the, some of the hysteria associated with that. And, and, and all of your clients are going to react to this differently. The sellers and buyers are going to, going to receive the information differently. They're going to digest the information differently. They're going to process it differently. And, and you as the broker on the transaction um, have, have to be the one to, 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 to sort of mediate that and to act in your, in your agent client's best interest or to, to facilitate a, 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 a brokerage relationship or transaction brokerage relationship between a buyer and a seller. M make sure everybody is uh, letting cooler heads prevail and, 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 uh, and, and taking a breath. And, and again, if, if everybody needs to take a, take a step back, then, then that amend extent is, is available to keep the contract in place and give, give everybody time to, 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 to cool off. And I, I know there might be implications of that. I know it's going to require the agreement of both parties, but in this, in this current environment we're in, um, a good broker is going to be able to, uh, help identify, uh, the agreement between, uh, multiple parties to, to, to allow everybody to potentially take that breath. So anyhow, I hope some of that information helps a little bit. And, uh, um, wanted to get it out kind of in a, in a hurry. The legal hotline will be available normal business hours uh, next week and going forward, 9 to 12 and 1 to 4. Um, and uh, always look forward to hearing from you. So, uh, so check in if you've got questions about deals in relation to the current uh, market conditions or anything else, we're going to be there for you. Uh, in the meantime, go out and get yourself some toilet paper. Bye, guys. Thanks.